Hello, so we made it to the Smith chart, which I think is a really cool tool, and hopefully you'll feel the same after you use it a few times. In this segment, we'll be covering two things. A two minute recap of the Smith chart so that you can remember how it's built, how it's made, and in doing so, hopefully you'll remember how to use it. In the second half, I'll go over an example where I'll generate a matching network with the help of a single open stub. So what's the motivation behind understanding and using the Smith chart? Well, really, you can, you can, do an impedance, you can generate an impedance matching network without the help of a Smith chart using all the analytical expressions that we know. But the Smith chart is a really cool graphical tool that will help speed up the design process. And you want to generate these matching networks because then you minimize any reflection from the load to your source, therefore optimizing the power transfer. So let's take a look at how the Smith chart is generated. If we look at the reflection coefficient, it is in general complex and a function of your load impedance and your characteristic impedance. Now, if we normalize the expression and we rearrange terms, we now have a normalized load impedance that has a real part associated with resistance and an imaginary part associated with reactance. If you take a look at only the real part, you'll see that you end up with a parametric equation, and that parametric equation is the equation of a circle and for various values of your load resistance uh, you'll see that you'll get a family of circles for example if you have a resistance of two you get a smaller circle inside to the right and for, for smaller resistance values you'll get a larger circle if you do the same for the reactants you'll get another parametric equation for positive reactance values you get curves on the upper half of the Smith chart and for lower or negative values, you get curves or circles on the lower half of the Smith chart. So what I've got here is a simplified Smith chart. I took away the scales on the outer perimeter, uh, made it a little bit coarser so that it makes the illustration a little bit more easy to understand. And I also highlighted the resistance values blue and the reactance values gold so that they uh, pop out at you. So in general I try to remember uh, the following phrase so that I know exactly where my short matched open locations are and the phrase is that any schmo can learn how to use a Smith chart so that tells me where the short is, the far left, the matched point in the center of the Smith chart and the open on the far right. Now if you uh, Consider only the resistance, the real part of your complex normalized impedance. Uh, for values greater than 1, you know it's going to be occupying the right half of your Smith chart um, because you can think of it as approaching that of an open. And uh, for values less than 1, you're going to be on the left side of the Smith chart. And if you consider reactance values, for increasing reactance values, you're going in the clockwise direction. You're going to be in the upper half of the Smith chart and that reactance is associated with some inductance. For the, uh, the lower half of the Smith chart you have uh, a capacitance. Uh, points 1, 2, 3, and 4 are four examples that I've illustrated where 1 and 2 have the same reactance, namely that of an inductance, but they have different resistances. So uh, point one has a resistance value that's half that of the characteristic impedance and therefore it's on the left and point number two has two times that of the characteristic impedance and therefore is on the right. The only difference between uh, one, two, and three, and, or excuse me, the only difference uh, that three and four have with one and two is that uh, the reactance is negative and is therefore associated with capacitance. So I have that summarized in this table and you can, you can pause the video to take a look at it if you like. So I'm going to run through an example here of how to generate a matching network with the help of a single open stub. So if we have, if we have a load impedance given by uh, 25 plus J10, the first thing we need to do is locate our normalized impedance.
our normalized load impedance, which is 0 0.5 plus J 0.2. And where is that on the Smith chart? That's going to be our point A here. The next step is to locate our visoire circle, which is this circle right here that I'm going to highlight. Okay. And after that, we're going to locate our uh, normalized load impedance. And that normalized load impedance is simply on the other side of the visoire circle uh, directly across from point A. So that's given by this point B. So at this point, you may be wondering, OK, well, I've, I've located the normalized load impedance. I drew the visoire circle and I've located the admittance, the normalized admittance value. Uh, what is next? Why are we doing this? Well, essentially you want to get yourself onto the uh, constant conductance circle of one. And this is because the being on that constant conductance circle of one basically means you've got a real part of one. And at that point, all you've got to do is design a parallel component in this case to help tune out that capacitance that you have. And uh, another reason for why we're using admittance is because it'll make our lives easier when we want to uh, consider the parallel combination of the admittance that we're seeing down uh, transmission line number one and transmission line number two. So let's do that. How do we get from point B to point C? Now, there are two solutions to this problem, or actually infinitely many, but uh, some are better than others. For example, we want to get to point C uh, because it'll effectively give us a shorter matching network, um, at least for transmission line of length L1. We could always go to C prime, but that's not necessary. So in order to decide on the length of transmission line number one, we first have to draw a line from the matched point through point B and out through the Smith chart. Now we'll make note of the starting wavelength. Now I'm looking specifically at the uh, wavelength towards the generator scale. Uh, you're going to have to pull out your Smith chart to take a look at it since I don't have it here on this illustration. And then I'm going to basically traverse on the outer perimeter until I have uh, a transmission line length that gives me a point that corresponds to C. So that traversal corresponds to the yellow portion of our first drawn visoire circle. So we make note of the stopping position, which is 0.35 lambda. And the difference between the stopping and starting position gives us the transmission line length L1. And if we go back to point C and we make note of the emittance, we see that it's got a real part of 1, okay? And approximately, I'm going to try to draw this here, approximately a reactance of minus J.75. And that's what I've got illustrated here. So now our task is to design an open stub uh, transmission line to tune out that capacitive reactance. Now we can look at that open effectively as a load. And that new load is going to have to transform via a transmission line length of L2 such that it gives us a reactance of plus J. 0.75. So because we're uh, designing a transmission line length here, the traversal is going to again be only along its constant visoire circle. And the starting position is here. Uh, the open uh, position for an emittance chart. So if you recall, uh, if you're dealing with an impedance chart, you follow the Schmo uh, statement that I made. However, since we're dealing with emittances, you basically flip that around 
and your left side now is the open, the center is still the matched point, and your right now is, is corresponds to a short. So going back to our uh, transmission line length of L2, we made note of the starting position, which corresponds to zero lambda. The ending position, it corresponds to 0.1 lambda. So the difference is 0.1 lambda. And we have that here as equation number five. So equation number six is where we add up the uh, admittances looking down transmission line of length L1 and looking down transmission line of L2, which I've named the uh, short stub admittance, which we know is positive J.75. And the summation of that gives us one. Therefore, we now have a matched network. Now, or a, a, g a good matching network, matching our load to the feed line. Now, this is one of many solutions. Uh, certainly, you can do this many different ways. And this concludes this segment. If you have any questions, feel free to email me or ask me uh, during or after discussion. So here are some tips and uh, things to remember. I'm not going to read through them, but you're more than welcome to pause the video to watch or read them. And here's the second half of the tips.